Yeah, you look the part out there. Yeah, it's a, um, I'm good for about two laps, and then all the aches and pains from the crash start to rear their ugly head, and uh, it, the last couple of laps are a bit of a struggle. But um, no, we feel good, feel good on the bike, and uh, I look forward to getting back to 100% fitness and, and having another crop a go. We're getting near the end of the season now. Uh, any more meetings this year? Uh, we're booked in for Frittenden, um, and that's probably going to be it. Um, it's not the best time of year to shell out loads of money on bike repairs and new helmet and everything else. Um, so we'll, we'll do Britain and I think and then that'll probably be it. There's one near you next week though, Chancey Corbett. Yeah, but my wife wants to go on holiday. My wife wants to go on holiday, as per, <laughs> as per usual. Holiday, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I wonder why you don't mention that, because I well that's right at his doorstep. Yeah, she, she books and I have to go, that's, uh, that's how it works in our house. Well, I suppose she's actually come racing. Well, yes, she is. I've had to send her to work today, though, because to, someone's got to pay for this bike, and I can't afford it all, so bless her, she's gone to work today. Well, she may as well do, yeah. <laughs> Good to see you racing well. Thank you, cheers. Thanks, Matt. Uh, thanks, Dave, for uh, catching up with all those riders during the end of all as we're underway with the GT 140s. Order of third and final leg ride. And Paul Smith, who was the addition to the programme this morning, is making a very, very good start of this one. And he leads going down the back straight. And uh, no competition to him as he goes around that top bend. The rest of the ride is getting strung out a little bit. But we'll pick them up for you as they come past me as Paul Smith takes the lead. Sean Harvey is in second place. And the 77... In third is Trevor Sheward. So Sean Harvey has been scoring steadily all afternoon. No answer to Paul Smith, but uh, still nothing in there getting those uh, decent point scores. As Paul Smith sees the last lap flag. And Sean Harvey looks over his shoulder. He can hear that there's somebody close to him. And I was mentioning earlier, if you've um, been following Grass Track for many, many years, you'll know that very much like Speedway, the solo riders have this balance between spinning the back wheel and getting drive onto the ground. One of the interesting things to talk to the riders this morning was that with these 140s, you've just got to keep it driving. You can't afford for that back wheel to spin out. It's a very, very different format. And uh, so all that. Uh, Appreciation to Paul Smith taking that win in race 21, so he adds more maximum points to his points tally. And I'm sure we're going to see him in the big final. So race 21, it was the first of the third leg rides for the GT 140 class. And a win for number nine, Paul Smith. In second place, number 72, Sean Harvey. In third place, number 77, Trevor Seward. In third place, number seven, Darren Sargent. And in fifth place, number 13, Morgan Alexander. Sixth place, number 81, Lester Denham. Seventh place, number 22, Callum Vanstone. And eighth place, number eight. Ninth place, number 27. Tenth place, number 19. The winning time, 139.30. 139.30. I should have had nine. 72, 77, 7, 13, 81, 22, 8, 27, and 19. 139.30. So, the GT 140s, race 22 in your program. And I'm perhaps looking for our uh, leader, number 51. Well, that's, he's in second spot at the moment, but 41, Jed Rolf is the leader at the moment. And as they all close up on that pit bend and change positions, see who's got the best of them on that back straight. In terms of point scoring after two rides, it was Rob Fortune, number 51, that was on the top of the points chart. But we've now got... A well, Rob Fortune, I can see right on the inside, trying to get up into second place. But Carl Russian was the other rider that was in amongst that number 63. And he's certainly sitting in second place on the overall point scoring after two rides. As we see them go into the last lap this time, this is where they start to sort themselves out. And you can see that number 51, Rob Fortune, has got himself to the front now. 
but just as I say that, you can see that he's changed and he's back in third place. Well, he's gone through on the inside then, he's got himself to the front of the go up that back straight and into the top turn. It's going to be close to the line between these three as they come almost together off that top turn. And it is Rogue Fortune that takes it. Mark Collins is in second. Oh, number 68, Chris Mackett put in there as well. So, race 22 in your programme. Third leg and final leg rides for the GT140s. Third win for number 51. He's kept a maximum through the afternoon. Number 51 is, of course, Rob Fortune. In second place, 305, Mark Collins. In third place, number 68, Chris Mackett. In fourth place, number 41, Jed Ralph. In fifth place, number 56, Kevin Bundock. And in sixth place, number 88, Murray Collins. Seventh place, number 811. Eighth place, 180. And the winning time, 138.73. 138.73, you should have had 51, 305, 68, 41, 56, 88, 811, and 180. So we now turn our attention to the uh, old and new sidecars. They're already on the start line. The tapes have gone up and they're already coming down past me for the first time. Yep. I can see that uh, Gary Palmer was uh, fighting with his outfit to get off that start line. As we go round that top bend, you can see that they've already split themselves up and we've got an early leader by quite a margin. I'm expecting that to be number 72, Mark Courtney, as he really has looked to be absolutely terrific this afternoon. Confirmed as he comes round past me, Joe Mervis got himself up into second. Brian Hatch and Les Rorton have got themselves into third, and Gary Palmer has got the work to do. around this pit bend for the second time. Mark Courtney very much in control. With Liam Torres on that 500 Suzuki engine. Joe Mogg still there in second. Brian Hatch still holding third. And Gary Palmer sitting in that full spot. So one more lap to go for Mark Courtney. He was top of the point scoring on 14 points from two rides. As he goes into the last lap, it looks like he's going to make it a maximum, but there's a good scrap going on between these two. As Brian Hatch has now got himself in a second, but Joe Mogg wants to uh, keep that second place. So Brian Hatch and Lewis Wharton it is that have got that second spot. As Mark Corby comes out and takes yet another second place this afternoon. Sure we're going to be seeing him in the A-final. Uh, Brian Hatch finishes in second place. Joe Mogg finishing in third. And Gary Palmer finishing in fourth. So, race 23 for competitors only, a win for number 72. Once again this afternoon, Mark Courtney and Liam Torres. Second, we've got number 69, that's Brian Hatch and Lewis Rorton. In third place, number 98, Joe Mogg and Joe Smith. And in fourth place, number 18, Gary Palmiter and Michael Topman. The winning time was 147.24, 147.24. As you should have had 72, 69, 98, and 18. So we're now looking at race at 24, and they're already underway. And as they go into that first turn, we've got problems for one of our outfits going into the centre green.
Well, it's Liam Brown and Kieran Knightley. Kieran Avery, I should say, that uh, have had that early lead, and they certainly look to be uh, taking the Andrew's still there in that second spot, but this one really has started to get spread out. There's uh, number 48, and Liam Brown, who uh, is doing his point scoring no harm at all. As he was sitting on 10 points after two legs, so we'll get maximum points this time. To 17 as he comes round uh, off that bottom turn. One more lap to go for Liam Brown. He's certainly having a busy afternoon. And a wonderful sound of Alan Burdett's bike, that uh, V Twin Triumph. As we look to that pit corner for the last time as they come towards the chequered flag. This is the end of the qualifying heats for the new and old sidecars. And it's a good win for Liam Brown and Kieran Ivey. Alan Burdett and Ray Andrews finish in second. And Mike Palmer and Wayne Powell finishing in third spot. No, they're not. Chris Toole and Dylan Newton followed home by Mike Powell and Wayne Powell. Race 24, for those of you that keep your programs 100%, was a win for number 48, which is Liam Brown and Kieran Ivey. In second place, number 4, Alan Burdett and Ray Andrews. In third place, number 169, Chris Tyrrell and Dylan Newton. In fourth place, number 46, Mike Powell and Wayne Powell. Mike Palmer and Wayne Powell, I should say. And the winning turn, 148.93. 148.93, the numbers again, 48.4. 16946 as we now turn our attention to the third qualifying rides for the 500cc champion of champion solos and how does it look at the moment we've got on 18 points number 69 that is uh, James Wright yeah, he goes in race 27 we've got Paul Hurry he goes in race 26. They're joined on 18 points, two rides, two wins. Andrew Appleton. He goes in race 27. He's on next on 16 points. Number 109, Zach Fitnick. He'll go up against James Wright and Andrew Appleton in race 27. So a good chance for riders a little bit further down the front scoring chance to score good points in this one as they indeed get underway. Charlie Powell as they go into this first turn is that Charlie Powell and Martin Sturgeon that are leading as they come round off that top bend Martin Sturgeon gets the best of it Charlie Powell is in second Andrew Whitaker is the rider in third place and is closing on Charlie Powell looks to attack coming out of that pit bend Martin Sturgeon has got away and he's got a couple of ladies and very quick rides this afternoon Charlie Powell trying to come back at him though it's pulled in coming out of that top bend. Into the pit bend we go, and certainly all eyes on those front three, because Andrew Whitaker is not out of it yet. He's still sitting there in third. But Marty Sturgeon riding well to keep the rest of them at bay as he goes round that top bend, leaving. He's gone slightly wide. Charlie Powell has seen it. He's gone for the inside line. In the last lap they go, and Charlie Powell is a lot closer this time. Around the pit bend he goes, and Charlie Powell is closing as he comes out of that pit bend and up the back straight. He looks to ride around this top bend, so there'll be yellow flags that shouldn't be changing places as they come around that top bend. Martin Sturgeon and Charlie Powell together in that top bend. That's what lose Charlie Powell. We hope that Charlie's okay as they go down this back straight. I can now see we've got a red flag. Now oh, immediately Charlie's up on his feet, so that's good to see. So, race 25, that uh, obviously we had to have, in the interest of safety, the red flag put out, but they had completed three quarters race distance, so we can give you a result as a win for number 15.
Sean Martin Sturgeon. In second place, number 171, Andrew Whitaker. In third place, number 17, Gareth Ignop. In fourth place, number 14, Rodney McDowell. And O'Donnell even. <laughs> in fifth place, number 41, Stuart Mears. In sixth place, number 7. No other finishes there. And no time, clearly, as the red flag had already gone out before the checker flag was put out. So, you should have for race 25, 15, 171, 17, 14, 41 and 7. Out of the pits and up towards that start line. And after two rides, we're looking to see Paul Hurry once again. He's uh, had two rides, and two wins. Can he make it three out of three and get himself straight into that A final? And away we go as we get underway going up that back straight. Looking for those red letters. Red letters of Paul Hurry that go into that top bend leading. And what sort of line will he get coming off that top bend? He looks very controlled. Picks the wheel up in the air, but Mark Giles is chasing after him. Charlie Saunders is a rider in third. But Paul Hurry has got away from them as he goes up that back straight. Looking for control. Mark Giles with no answer to him at the moment. I'm sure he'll concentrate on keeping that second place and he's scoring well. Paul Hurry has time to look over his shoulder. He knows he's got nobody close to him. So he can now uh, certainly test out the track. There are the quickest lines. Certainly going in very, very tight on that top end compared to one or two of the other riders. Drips out slightly, comes past us. Positive drive coming down the finishing straight. There will be uh, maximum points from three rides. He goes up to that top corner. He's a little bit off the flags. He's in the middle of the circuit, but uh, he's certainly got the speed on. Takes the checker flag and maximum points. Close with his finish, but Mark Giles has done enough. Charlie Saunders got close, but he has to settle for third. And uh, Ricky Sanford finishing in fourth. So race 26 and a win for number 86. We're used to saying that this afternoon. Paul Hurry, three rides, three wins. In second place, number 26, Mark Giles. In third place, number 25, Charlie Saunders. In fourth place, 04, Ricky Sanford. In fifth place, 192, Paul Whitelam Jr. 115.42 the winning time, 115.42, you should have had 86, 26, 25, 4 and 192. is already up to that start line and as we get underway we know that uh, James Wright would have sat in the pits and seen Paul Hurry make it three out of three he's the only other rider that can equal Paul Hurry looking for a number 69 and at the moment he's, he's sitting in third place as Zach Picknick and Andrew Appleton have got away from him and they go up the back straight with Zach now getting to the front. Rapid and staying close but sitting there in that second place. And round the top turn they come for the second time. It is Zach Picknick looking for maximum points from this one. Andrew Rapidin sitting there in second. James Wright, who was the only other rider that could have got a maximum from his uh, point scoring ride, sitting in third place at the moment. That'll be enough to get him into that A final. And two riders will come through the B final as well. So one more lap to go. Zach it is. It's uh, setting the pace. Andrew Appleton is still sitting there in second. 
James Wright still holding third, Andrew Fever in fourth place. And as they start to uh, catch the tail enders, it is a very quick finish for Zach Vick as he takes the checkered flag. Andrew Atherton finishes in second, James Wright finishes in third. Adam Fulmer finishing in fourth. Aaron Butcher it was the fifth place finisher there. So race 27 and the last of the qualifying legs for the 500cc solo champion of champions for 2019. A very impressive win for number 109, Zach Vickneck. In second place to him, number four, Andrew Appleton. In third place, number 69, Jamie Wright. In fourth place, number 24, Adam Filmer. In fifth place, number 20, Aaron Butcher. In sixth place, number 53, Jody Hodgson. And in seventh place, number 77, Barry Coates. The winning time was 114.59, 114.59. You should have had 109, 4, 69, 24, 20, 53 and 77. So that completes the qualifying rise for the solo 500cc champion champions competition. The points now will be added up and uh, we will be seeing. And so after three point scoring ride, the top point scorer down to 6th place will go straight into the A final 7th to 14th go into the B final but remember there's also the caveat that uh, the first 1 and 2 in the B final do make up those extra 2 places in the A final so the points will all be added up as we now look to conclude the sidecar qualifying as we get underway with race 28 it's close going into that top bend but just coming off that top bend, you can see that Mark Cossa uh, make the best of it going down that back straight. I'll pick them up for you as they come round past me for the second time. But it is Gary Shearer that was giving uh, the fight in that first starting straight. But Mark Cossa has got the better of him now, and uh, Gary Shearer and Ryan Barker have settled that second place. Nick Stace and Ryan Knowles who are sitting there in third. But whilst we've seen Paul Hurley do it three out of three in the solos, it looks as if Mark Cosser is going to make it three out of three in the sidecars. As he goes down the bank straight for the second time. It will be last lap flag this time as he comes round. And he really does look to have to make it this circuit. Perhaps uh, time to look at the uh, times that he's putting up. Gary Shearer and Ryan Barker still comfortably in that second place. But no answer to the flying Mark Cossa and Liam Brown. Off that bottom turn they come. They'll see the checker flag. That's the third of the afternoon. That's maximum points going into that A final. Gary Shearer finishes in second. Nick Stace finishes in third. And then we see Neville Penfold crossing the line in fourth place. So, race 28, the uh, first of the third leg rides for the sidecars, and a very impressive win, making it three out of three for number 37, Mark Cossa and Liam Brown. In second place, number eight, Gary Shearer and Ryan Barker. In third place, number 18, Mick Stace and Ryan Knowles. In fourth place, number two, Neville Penfold and Kevin Jones. And in fifth place, number 68, Dan Berwick and Josh Russell. The winning time was 132.31. You should have had 37, 8, 18, 2, 68, 132.31. As we now look to race 29, they're already underway and coming down past me for the first time. 
Matt Primrola, I can see, has made a very good start. He's had to tuck in now, and indeed, Matt Primrola does get to the front as Tom Crossery possibly is in the maximum and can stay close to the Back in third place at the moment, but fighting for second as he goes into that pit bend. He's gone the long way round. He's got himself in the second, has he? He's close as they come past me, Will Wilson. He's trying to keep Tom Crosser out until Will Wilson goes for that inside line, but Tom Crosser looks to have done enough. He now chases after Matt Pomeroy, who's got the early lead. So, Tom Crosser and Wayne Rickards, it is, that go into this pit bend. They look quick coming off this pit bend and up the finishing straight. And Matt Frambola must know that he's there now. He had a good ride second time out, Matt Frambola. And he's uh, equaling it now, but Tom Crosser has got close. He's looking for a gap on the inside. He's going to push. He tries to open the gap up and he gets through on the inside and he goes down that back straight. And so he's been quicker all afternoon coming around this pit bend. So I don't think Matt Frambola is going to catch him. And Tom Crosser does indeed get away going up this finishing straight. In the last lap they go. Matt from Roller can only watch Tom Crosser going away from him now. As Tom Crosser is going to equal Mark Crosser, his brother, and go maximum points in the final. Those two will be coming together, but you can remember perhaps the early start of this race that Tom Crosser wasn't making it off the start line. He gets maximum points. Matt from Roller finishing in second. Rob Wilson in third. Neil Owen in fourth. They've got maximum points from three rides. 29 it is that goes in first place. And in second to them, the early leaders, number 15, Matt Pomola and Gareth Williams. Third place, number 24, Rob Wilson and Terry Saunters. Fourth place, number 12, Neil Owen and ja Jason Farwell. Fifth place, number 183, Ian Lee Amos and Kieran Ivey. The winning time, 134.20, 134.20. So, race 30, we move to the third leg of the uh, sidecars. This, the last of the qualifying rides for the Champion of Champions trophies, both uh, 500cc solo and 1000cc sidecars. Those that haven't scored well earlier on this afternoon have got to make sure they score well in this one. And a good chance they've got as Will Offen is sitting in fourth place overall so a good ride in this one for Will Offen and he'll make sure of a place in that A final without having to go through the B they get underway and it is Will Offen that makes the start and gets into the front as they go into that first turn well he kicks sideways but I think he's done enough to keep the lead as he comes out of that top corner and down the next one keeps the power on Drives hard round this bottom turn, coming round towards us, but he's under pressure for that lead. As it is, uh, Clint Blundell that's uh, giving him a tough time at the moment, but Will Offen just with the lead. Clint Blundell getting closer though, as he goes round that top turn, gets close to the back wheel. Clint Blundell is spinning now, not giving any drive down that back straight, so he's got to catch up. But as he comes round this bottom bend, it is interesting to see that Clint Blundell has a much tighter line coming round this bottom bend. And all the time I'm saying that, you can see that Paul Whiteland has gone the wide line round the outside. But while Clint Blundell is trying to get past, you can see that Paul Whiteland has gone round the outside. He's on attack to try and get both of them in one hit. Again he goes round the outside and again he tries to take both of them in one move. As Paul Whiteland has got that bike so around much better than we've seen it this afternoon. Drives hard on the outside. I think he's got Clint Blundell. But has he got Will Offen? It's the three of them are together on that top end. And Paul Whiteland it is. It just breaks on the outside. Well, what's happening is Clint Blundell now tries to get Paul Whiteland. And the two of them together in this pit then come round towards the checkered flag this time. Paul Whiteland has done enough. A terrific ride from Paul Whiteland. Clint Blundell goes second. Fantastic sidecar race. And I think... Uh, what a setup now we've got. As you can see, the sort of racing these boys can produce, and we've got the B final and the A final to come for this year's Champion of Champions. So, race 30. 
Ricky will ask about our qualifying rides and uh, an interesting one it turned out to be. Eventually a fantastic win for outfit number 92, Paul Whitelam and Alan Elliott. In second place to them, number 10, Clint Blundell and Kevin Bennett. In third place, number 80, Will Uffin and Steve Hargreaves. In fourth place, number 184, John Hiscock and Terry Madley. The winning time, 136.32, 136.32. So we will have a short break. You can see that um, Will Penfold was uh, offered a little bit of practice to see if he sorted his engine out. And uh, it certainly sounded to be running a lot better than it was earlier on this afternoon. So as the point scorers now will work out who it is that goes in those B finals, then who goes automatically into the A finals, and we've got the B finals to enjoy to see who takes those last two places. Cheers, Dave. Oh, dear. Normally can't remember what I was doing last week, let alone about 20, 30 years ago. Right, let's turn our attention to today's racing, and that's race 31 that's in your program, and this is effectively a qualifying ride because the first two over the line will join the rest of the riders already qualified for race 35. Well, obviously they've done a lot of work on the track, they've put a lot of water down, and uh, they've been rolling, so one or two of the riders deciding just to have a quick look around the track. Now told that these are the youngsters actually that are going to go and uh, if you've been uh, watching this 140 class you can see that the competition is quite close and whilst it's a slightly different style of riding um, it's a relatively inexpensive way to get into the sport so uh, hopefully it's got a future. of the future. These are the youngsters that are competing in uh, effectively schoolboy racing and being given a chance to have a go on the big circuit. Side. The youngsters have gone back into the pits, but for we see most guys uh, when they're a little bit older and in the adult scene. But on the far side, a lot of riders that know the only thing that's important in this race is first and second. that's important and already we've got riders sorting themselves out as they come down that first turn and down past me for the first time it is 41 Jed Wolf that's got that lead at the moment so he's sure of a pace in the A final but a good scrap going on for that second place as they're now starting to sort themselves out a bit more and the gap is certainly opening up for Jed as he goes into that top end and I'm seeing places change, third, fourth and fifth, and we sort out those riders for you as they come past me. Ah, Glenn Stanton is the rider that's in second at the moment. Trevor Seward is the rider in third, but Glenn Stanton, who I remember riding in the Southern Centre, and uh, I think he was a Midlands rider at one time in the final class. Again, a very talented rider that's perhaps uh, having a go at this inexpensive sport and he's at the moment in that important second qualifying place but Trevor 
Trevor Sheard wants to change that as he goes for a tight lane on the inside of Glynn. He's really all the way on that second place. As Jed Wolf has got away from the rest of the field. And it's all about just to go through into the final. And it's going to be close for that second place. Trevor Sheard now being forced to go wide and Glynn holding the line perfectly as he comes down towards us. The checker flag goes and Glenn Standing gets it. So, race 31, GT Gold Trophy, first two to the final, is the B final, it was a win for number 41 and a place in the A final for Jed Wolf. In second place two, number 811, that's Glyn Stanton, and in third place, just missing out, getting into that A final today, is number 77, Trevor Seward. Fourth place, number 13, Morgan Alexander. Fifth place, number 22, Callum Vanstone. Sixth place, number 8, Thomas Walding. And at seventh place, number 27, Danny Hogg. The winning time was 141.17, 141.17. So 41 and 811, we move in to race 35. They take places 9 and 10. So that completes the lineup for race 35. Race 32, we turn our attention back to the Champion of Champions 500. Remember, it's the same criteria again. Two only to go through into that A final. And they've already broken as they go into that first turn and come down past me for the first time. Setting the pace is number 92, Charlie Powell. Who you remember had that fall in his last ride. It means he's got a command of this B final, but he knows more than anybody. The first in that A final and he's certainly making sure that at the moment as he comes around that top turn he's got the lead but he's been pushed hard all the way by Andrew Whitaker in second place Charlie Saunders is the rider in third at the moment he's the one that's missing out on the A place final and it's Charlie Saunders who's got him to be able to catch Andrew Whitaker in that second spot as the race unfolds, we just have one more lap to go. Charlie Powell is making sure of a place in the final. Andrew Whitaker is there at the moment, but Charlie Saunders wants to change that. Gets closer as he goes into this pit then. Goes in a lot tighter, tries to keep it tight. Now puts the power on. He's going to be losing man. He got that back straight. Going hard in this top bend. It's going to be this top bend. Or not at all. He's going to miss out on the A final as he comes down. Last ass, he pushes hard, but Andrew Whitaker holds on. He gets that second place, an important place in the final. So, race 32 in your programme. Again, it was all about those first two, and the winning place was taken by number 92, Charlie Powell. Second to him, number 171, Andrew Whitaker. And third place, just missing out on a place in the A final, number 25, Charlie Saunders. Fourth place goes to number 14, Rodney McDonald. And fifth place, number 20, Aaron Butcher. Sixth place, number 41, Stuart Mears. Seventh place, 04, Ricky Sanford. And eighth place, number 24, Adam Filmer. The winning time was 118.64, 118.64, 92, 171, 25, 14, 20, 41, 04, and 24. 118.64. So, race 33, we're uh, looking for the sidecars. This is for the Champion of Champions sidecars. And uh, again, it's two riders only go into the A final. We know who the four qualifiers automatically are. That's the last race of the day, race 37. But from here, we need two. And competing in this one, Rob Wilson and uh, Terry Saunters. Well, they would definitely want a place in the A final. They've had some tough rides today. But also number 92, Paul Whiteland and Alan Elliott. They look to have problems in their first ride this afternoon. They look to got things sorted out, but they've had to work their way through the field to get the points. And they now know that this is a last-ditch chance to get themselves into that A final. Clint Rondell has had some very good rides this afternoon. He goes... He's now come into line on the inside gate. 
Starters move away, and up they go, and down past me for the first time, who's made the best of the starts? Well, I can see that it's Gary Shearer that's made the best of the starts, Neil Owen is in there in second place at the moment, Paul Wrightlam is in that third place at the moment, so he's got work to do. The first two, and Ryan Barker at the moment, being chased hard by Neil Owen. And Neil Owen is looking for a way through on the inside, but look at Paul Whiteland. Paul Whiteland is in third place at the moment, and he knows that he's got second, got to get second to get a place in that A final, as the dust flies on that top end. And got pressure in that third place as well, because uh, he's now got an outfit in line with him. As they come round off that pit bend, Gary Shearer is who leaving from Neil Owen in second. Paul Wylam in third. It's Clint Wendell that was pushing hard for that third place. You can see that Gary Shearer and Ryan Barker they really have got faster and faster as the day's gone on. Go into the last lap in that prominent position of uh, getting themselves in the A final. Paul Whiteland knows he's got one more lap to go to try and get past Neil Owen. He's going the long way around on that pit top bend and he goes down the back straight and gets himself in the middle and comes back at it. Neil Owen comes back. He'll have the inside line on this pit bend. It's going to be close to the line. Paul Whiteland tries to cut across and to the line they come and Neil Owen is done enough. And Paul Whiteland <laughs> certainly looks to not have things going the wrong way this afternoon. Lots of smoke as he comes across the line. And he goes straight off into the centre green. You can see the smoke pouring out of that engine. champion of champions B final we're looking for the first two to go out in that big A final it was a win in race 33 for outfit number 8 Gary Shearer and Ryan Barker in second place number 12 Neil Owen and Jason Farwell in third place number 92 Bill Wrightland and Alan Elliott in fourth place number 10 Clint Blundell and Kevin Bennett in fifth place, number 24, Rob Wilson and Terry Saunters. And sixth place, number 18, Nick Stace and Ryan Knowles. The winning time, 135.83, 135.83, 8, 12, 92, 10, 24, and 18. And that means we can now put 8 and 12 into that race 37. Their qualifiers 5 and 6, that's 8 and 12. As we now move to the final of the old and new sidecars, I remind you they're riding for the uh, Kevin Parmiter Memorial Trophy. Starters move away, the tapes go up and we're underway with the old and new sidecars and I'm looking to see who's made the best of it from the start. And that looks to me like Liam Brown has made the best of it, but he's got Mark Courtney on the inside of him, those two outfits together as they go around that first turn. And Mark Courtney looks to be the best of it. Gets himself to the front, but Liam Brown is right there with him. As he drives hard into that pit bend, looking for a tighter line coming out. Mark Courtney drifts slightly wide, but he's done enough. He stays in front. Well, Alan Burdett is uh, the rider in third place at the moment. But really all eyes on those front two, because Liam Brown is certainly giving Mark Courtney not getting it all his own way. He tries to get the 
perfect line round this pit bend. Comes towards us for the second time. He's got the lead, but only just from Liam Brown in second. Very experienced sidecar passenger, Liam Brown. He's ridden in the European rounds in the 500 sidecars. He's uh, also, of course, ridden in the 1,000cc sidecars. Interesting to see him as a driver. He's certainly looking for the lines, looking for trying to keep Mark Gordon his going to and then holds it in tight. But he's got to find some speed from somewhere. He knows he can't just continue to follow him. But Mark Courtney certainly in control at the moment as he goes down the bank straight. There's a, perhaps a little bit of a gap. Liam Brown not finding the advantage. Uh, There it goes, that's going to be a win for Mark Courtney and Liam Torres. Uh, a great effort from uh, Liam Brown and Kieran Ivey. But uh, I think Mark Courtney made it his. Sidecars come round to receive her. It was a brilliant ride all afternoon from Mark Courtney. And an excellent ride from Liam Brown. And I'm sure Gary Palmer is going to be pleased with that third place. Joe Merrick, good to see him out there. And yes, those are the sort of outfits that I used to ride many years ago. I'm sure it felt like they went a lot faster in those days, but uh, maybe. So the official result of race 34, for those of you that keep your programs 100%, he should have a win for number 72. That, of course, is the outfit of Mark Courtney and Liam Torres. In second place, number 48, Liam Brown and Kieran Ivey. In third place, number 18, Gary Parmeter and Michael Tottman. In fourth place, number 98, Joe Mogg and Joe Smith. The winning time... 147.18, 147 17, 48, 18 and 98. So we now go over the page and we know exactly who it is that's going in the GT140. First time that they've been to um, the Astra Club meeting here at Swingfield. And I think you'll agree, perhaps an interesting class and perhaps uh, get a lot of other people thinking as well because a lot of uh, X500 solo riders have returned to this class. It looks very competitive. I think on a slightly smaller circuit, it could be very, very interesting racing. Oh, and a few riders getting a bit of an advantage there. So I think the start is going to pull them back. Russian. We've got the GT140 and we've got the solo champion of champions. We now know exactly who goes in that one. And then obviously the final race of the day will be that 1000cc uh, sidecar champion of champions. The first one of our finals is underway as the tapes have gone up and we've got the GT140s underway. Who's it going to be this afternoon as they go down the back 
sorting themselves out going into that first turn. And this is what interests you with the 140s. Some riders seem quicker on the corners than they are on the straights. And uh, it is Kyle Russian with Jed Rolf indeed up there in the second spot at the moment. But that's allowed Kyle Russian to get away from the rest of the field. T-shirt back in fourth place. I was expecting to see him perhaps at the front. And where is Rob Fortune? Now we're looking for them to sort themselves out from the second down. And Rob Fortune has moved up in the second. Paul Smith has moved up in the third. So they've now got to try and close the gap on that very big lead that Carl Russian had built up. Paul Smith going round the outside. Oh, at the moment, those two together, but they've both got to try and close the gap on the early leader, as there is just one lap to go. And I think that Kyle Russian has saved it all for the final, because he's certainly got that lead and looks like hanging on to it. There's going to be a good scrap for that second place, as indeed we've got another rider coming in on that as well, but Paul Smith looks to have the better of it as they go off the back straight, and I don't think he's got enough time to catch Kyle Russian. As the checker flag is being made ready, we'll see the checker flag this time as they come down past us for the first time. The GT 140s, Kyle Rush and Paul Smith close on the line. Well, I think it was Rob Fortune that just got it. Well, I'm sure that uh, there's going to be plenty of discussion about this GT 140 class. You can see the attraction it's got for the riders. Good sport. the riders come round to receive your congratulations um, a very interesting class I think you'll admit that um, we've seen them here for the very first time we've seen lots of riders that have been involved in the sport for a very long time but certainly in different classes either riding 500 solos or indeed riding 500 sidecars and uh, Sean Harvey who leads them down past me number 72 done well this afternoon Carl Russian, I remember him riding a 500 solo, <laughs> and Paul Smith as well, he was from my part of the world, and Rob Fortune, he's still a very competitive 500 rider, Mark Collins, he was the one who was trying to get in on the action at the end of the race, but let's give you the official result, because it's a win for number 63, Carl Russian, in second place, number 9, Paul Smith. In third place, number 51, Rob Fortune. In fourth place, number 305, Mark Collins. In fifth place, number 68, Chris Mackett. In sixth place, number 72, Sean Harvey. Eighth place, number 88, Murray Collins. Eighth place, number 56, Kevin Bundock. Ninth place, number 811, Glyn Stanton. And the winning time was 137.80, 137.80. 63, 9, 51, 305, 68, 72, 88, 56, 811, 137.80. As we now move to the 2019 Champion of Champions 500cc solo. What a lineup we've got for the 2019 solo. We saw a great British Masters early on in the year. Who's going to take the champion of champions as we look to see that start go the starters move away? No, not yet. We've not happened with something over there at the moment. Now we're going to go over the track. Start gates go up and indeed we get underway. The start. Three riders together as they go into that first turn. They start to sort themselves out. Paul Hurry, I can see right on the inside. Back. Zach Vicknick it is, but Martin Sturgeon it is that's got the lead coming past me. Paul Hurry's now got past him. Zach Vicknick is with the lead at the moment, but Paul Hurry is in chase. 
by Andrew Appleton as Andrew Appleton goes in the third place with Zach Picnic, our British Masters champion, is leading from Paul Hurley in second. Andrew Appleton in third. Mark Giles has now come through in the fourth place. As we look to the far side, it is Zach in terrific form the Masters and he's now got to grips with this track and he doesn't look like being caught. He looks over his shoulder. One more lap to go. Paul Hurley in hot pursuit, but he can do nothing about it at the moment. He's got to follow that to that line round. He looks over his shoulder. He knows he's got to be second. Zach it is going to be that comes round off that top line with the checker flag. As you see the checker flag being raised, it's Zach Picknick that's going to take it. He is champion of champions. Paul Hurley in second. Andrew Appleton in third. Mark Giles in fourth. James Wright in fifth. And Mark Sturgeon in sixth. Well, it was all aboard up to the end of the day. We wondered if Paul Hurley was going to be able to uh, do it again this year, but uh, it wasn't to be. Zach Picknick, who missed out on one of his rides, he didn't come to the final on a maximum. He got beaten by other riders in his second ride, but he's pulled it out in the final. It was from start to finish. Paul Hurley doing everything he possibly could to catch him, but the very, very quick Zach Picknick did get the win. So, race 36 in your programme, let's give you the official result for those of you that keep the programmes 100%. It was a win for number 109. That, of course, is Zach Vecknick. In second place, number 86, Paul Hurry. In third place, number 4, Andrew Appleton. In fourth place, number 26, Mark Giles. In fifth place, number 69, James Wright. And in sixth place, number 15, Martin Sturgeon. The winning time, 114.17, 114.17, 109, 86, 4, 26, 69, and 15, 114.17. So we've got a lot of trophies to be given away this afternoon. Trophies for all the first uh, three in all classes. So uh, if you haven't got a rush off, hopefully you'll join us for the presentation. We'll try and get that organised for you as soon as we possibly can. And uh, before that, we've got to find out who's going to win the sidecars because we've got going into race 37 for the 2019 Champion of Champions. Number 37, Mark Cossa. And uh, passenger for this afternoon, Liam Brown. We've got against him, not been beaten this afternoon, number 29, Tom Cossa and Carl Pugh. Number 15, Matt from and Gareth Williams. Number 4, 4th place I should say, 80, is Will Offen and Steve Hargreaves. Qualifying from that B final, number 8, Gary Shearer and Ryan Barker. And also qualifying from that B final number 12, Neil Owen and Jason Farwell. Well, with the dust flying, I'm sure that uh, all the drivers are thinking they've got to make the start this time. They've got to get into that first corner. They've got to get ahead and let everybody else fight their way through the dust. So as the starters move away, the tapes go up. Who's made the best of the starts? We've got problems on that start for one of our crews. But at the moment, it is Mark Cossa that's got away. Well, the red flag is up as we've still got the passenger on the track. And unfortunately, it was Tom Cossa on the inside that lost Carl Pugh when the bike kicked sideways. We hope he's going to be all right. He's certainly up on his feet. So they get lined up again, and we watch the tapes go, and who's got the best of the starts this time? Again, bikes rearing in the air. Tom Crosser on the inside, Mark Crosser on the outside. The two of them together as they go in their first turn. Mark Crosser has kept it on and gone on the wide line, and he's gone the long way around that first bend. Tom Crosser trying to hang on to him. 
it's all changing that third Perth and fifth place. But at the moment, it's all eyes on the front with Mark Crosser leading as he comes round up that bottom turn. Mark Crosser and Liam Brown lead from Tom Crosser and Carl View in that second place. There's a bit of a gap then to Neil Owen in that third place. Further down, but all I'm sure on Mark Cosser as he comes round that pit bend. He really has had the measure of this circuit this afternoon. He's been a little bit uncatchable. I did wonder if Tom had managed to get a better start, get to that first corner first, but it wasn't to be as Mark Cosser stayed out there, drove the hard line round the outside, got himself in the front, and now he's pulling away. You can see him and the passenger down the side of the bike getting maximum drive. He really does know how to ride these sidecar outfits. And he once again had uh, missed out on the Masters this year. And his second, Gareth Winderburn, who unfortunately couldn't see the checkered flag being raised. You can see the style that he's got as he comes to the line. He crosses the line. Mark Cosser and Liam Brown win from Tom Cosser and Carl Pugh. Neil Owen and Jason Farwell pleased with their third place by the look of it. I think you'll agree once again. They've tried something different here at Astra today. We've had the GT 140s, we've had the old and new sidecars, but we've also had a terrific lineup in both 500 and 1000 cc sidecars for the Champion of Champions. Hope you've enjoyed the afternoon's racing. If you've got a long journey, I wish you a safe journey home. Hope we're going to see you at a grass track sometime soon. If you haven't got a rush off, we'll be with you for the presentations as soon as we can get them organised. So the official result of race 37, the last race in your program of races, the 1000cc sidecar 2019 champion of champions, number 37, Mark Cosser, and passenger for the afternoon, Liam Brown. In second to them, number 29, Tom Cosser and Carl Pugh. Third place, number 12, Neil Owen and Jason Farwell. As you'll see coming round, I'm sure Jason looks very, very pleased with himself. In fourth place, number 80, Will Offen and Steve Hargreaves. In fifth place, number 15, good to see him going well back from injury, number 15, Matt Pumroll and Gareth Williams. And sixth place, number 8, Gary Shearer and Ryan Barker. 132.32 winning time, 132.32 you should have had for race 37, 37, 29, 12, 80, 15 and 8, 132.32 the winning time. So as I say, they'll now be uh, packing up the track, etc. If you're joining us for the presentation, we'll try and get that organised for you as soon as possible. Sean is one of the men behind the GT140s. Gone very well today for you guys. I think we did extremely well. We thank Graham and the crew for uh, letting us come and ride here. It's been fantastic for us. And the racing, uh, we, when they went over the line, the third place one, Rob Fortune and Mark Collins were literally locked together in that final. Yeah, you tend to find that in this class. That's why I enjoy it so much, because it's so close. Everybody's got the same machinery, so... Hopefully there's nothing any further than that going on, but um, yeah, I mean we're all we're all having good fun. I mean, uh, Cole Russian obviously wins it all the time, but we're all chasing him, so we're all enjoying it. Yeah. Well, it looks like he's got the gold trophy, so uh, he'll be up in a minute. Yeah, he will be up in a minute. Yeah, he'll be over the moon with that, and uh, yeah, because uh, Adam Ships won it for the last two years. So where is he today? Is he finished doing it? No, every time I see him, I mean. If anybody knows Adam, he's quite a fit young lad, and all he says is, like, I'm not fit enough. Well, come on, look at us all. <laughs> so, have you finished now with 500 sidecars, just going to do duty 140s, or are you going to go back to 500 sidecar racing next year? I don't really know for a minute. I mean, I'm struggling with the 500 sidecars. I've got arthritis in my shoulders, and I've got two squashed discs in my back, and uh, I got injured in the British Championships a little bit, and it's played up ever since, so... I'm, uh, I'm in two minds at the moment what we're really going to do. There's a couple of big meetings abroad we'd like to do next year. Maybe that'll be the finish of everything. But we're not quite sure, but at the moment I'm, I'm struggling with it. So these are a lot easier. So you find it okay with your interest to race these GT140s? Yeah, I don't find them a problem because 
you're sort of upright in your body rather than on a cycle you're crouched down and uh, you know you're getting back pain all the time and no rear suspension and obviously you've got suspension and everything on these so it makes it easier so very good uh, are we ready gents uh, no uh, for the GT 140s in third place it was Rob Fortune In second place, Paul Smith. And the winner, Carl Russian. Go, Carl. Where's the winner, Carl? Carl Russian, the winner. There is a nice gold trophy waiting here for you, you know. Where is he gone? While we're waiting, uh, we'll have a word with uh, Rob. That was a fantastic finish, you and Mark Collins, wasn't it? Yeah, I was fighting my way to the back the whole way through the race. Um, don't know. Hits went well. Thought I was on the pace, but obviously not when it came to the final. Have you enjoyed this class? Yeah, it's, it, this and, and FGA sort of reignited my enthusiasm for the sport, which can't be a bad thing. Brilliant. Well done for your third place. Is he on the way? Well, he's on the way. We'll have a quick chat with Paul while we're waiting. Paul Smith, uh, retired for 20 years, but come back in this class and you've, you look like you've enjoyed it so far. Yes, it's been a great day. I've enjoyed it. Fantastic. Thank you, Paul. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner, Carl Russian. And of course, he's got that fantastic gold trophy. Uh, Jim Simmons, you'll be needed for the presentation shortly, if you could make your way over. So, big round of applause for them all. And that fantastic gold trophy. Carl, let's have a chat to Carl. That was amazing. Well done. And that is fantastic trophy you've just won. Oh, it's, it's amazing to be invited here and sort of play with some nice race surface. To win that is the icing on the cake, especially after today. It's not been a good day for us at camp. Well, you've done the business there. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Big round of applause, please, for Carl Russia. <laughs> right, uh, is uh, Gary Palmeter here? Where's Gary here? Where's Gary? Come and join us, Gary. What we do, we get Gary to make the presentation. Oh, thank you. That's why I brought you up here. <laughs> but your passenger can stay with you, though. Right, Gary. You've certainly had a good turnout today, and I know you've sponsored over the years, especially at the Masters. Today, you sponsored in the memory of Kevin, and that's absolutely fantastic. And you've got some lovely bibs there for the winners as well, and of course, your special shield. Tell us about the shield. Well, it's been going for 43 years, and obviously, parents would give it to the Dunmo Club, but over the years, the club's folded and we've changed different little things. And uh, Mark Courtley said, put it on the on this new and old class so I thought well let's do it but the big thing is saying thank you to Graham Harry and all his team here what a wonderful setup he's got and to have us here and I was just overwhelmed with it thank you well the main man is right behind you <laughs> thank you Mr Harry <laughs> <laughs> right so this will be interesting in third place is <laughs> Gary Parmeter and Michael Topburn <laughs> So there you are, present yourself with the money, and of course, you, that's a fantastic bibs you've had made there, absolutely. That's it, put, put them on, yeah. You don't want it done up here. Fantastic. Right, in second place was Liam Brown and Kieran Ivey. Yeah. Liam! Yeah. 
Big round of applause as they come up, everybody. So Gary here will present you with your bibs and uh, prize money. That's it, put your bibs on. So Liam, let's have a chat. Is this the start of something new? Are well, we going to see you now as a sidecar driver? You've done it all as a passenger. Um, I don't know. I, I enjoy it. It's a good bit of fun. And yeah. like the difference between the 1,000 and the 500, it's just, it is somewhat different. But it's, it is all fun. And you don't have to throw loads of money at it to be able to compete. And yeah, it's just, it's just one of them. Every now and again, I'm happy to have a bit of a play. Where did you get the bike from? Somebody sponsor you with it? Yeah, um, Chris Tyrrell lent me the bike. Um, he lent it to me a few months ago as well. Um, but yeah, it's, um, he just lets us use it as and when. Fantastic. Well, congratulations. Let's have a, a chat to Kieran. Um, enjoy that today? Yeah, it was good. It was a bit weird getting off out the straight and thinking that's it. But it's, it's a lot more enjoyable than people probably think to be honest. Uh, it's nice to see a new class in there. Well, it was great to watch. Well done. So, do you want to ju jump, on, jump on to the second place rostrum? There you go. Obviously, yeah, so you're, you've still got a presentation to make. Yeah. So, so, in first place, Mark Courtney and Leon Torres. And this is also for the Kevin Parmenter Memorial Trophy. Right, uh, Gary's got your bibs first of all, before you get the special trophy and the shield. And uh, there's a sh special shield that's been going for many, many years, over 40 years. And your trophies, gentlemen. No. Right, before you uh, get up on the rostrum there, turn round for us, turn round to the... Public there, fantastic riding again. Yeah, it was um, a bit worrying first part of the day because we thought our little engines wouldn't get around such a big track. But no, I thought it was enjoyable. Very you did have a tiger on your tail, and Liam, he was right up behind you. Well, I've been helping him out all week, trying to get him to bike to run. I wish I sort of sabotaged it now, but no, it was good racing. Good racing with him, and yeah, nice to have some competition. So you've been training him all week, have you? No, I think it's the other way around. <laughs> anyway, congratulations, special shield trophy. Uh, Leon, uh, well done, congratulations, sir. Thank you very much. Maybe, okay, if you jump up there, and then you come, you guys come there for your photo photograph. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause, please, for the old and new sidecars. Absolutely fantastic. Right, you've all got, uh, oh, you've got special bottles as well. Con congratulations to you all. So, ladies and gentlemen, next up is the 1000cc sidecars and the 500 solos. And I'm going to hand over to my friend here, Jim. Over to you, sir. Thanks, Dave. And, uh, of course, this is billed as the champion of champions, so really the 500 solos is bound to attract a very good field, and I think you'll agree, the racing we've seen this afternoon, it was not an easy event to win. But we've had some fantastic racing, and indeed I can call up, first of all, somebody to present the trophies to us, and I'm very pleased to welcome June onto the stage with me. So if we start with third place, finishing third for 2019, Andrew Appleton!
and I, I will get a quick word, Andrew, before we get all the rest of them up here. You've written this track many times. What we were reading on the social media was that Graham had put it back to the old track as such. Did it feel like that today? Yeah, it did. I, I am a big lover of this track, um, to be honest. Uh, I've won two uh, Masters Championships here on, on this track and I had a really good time today. Yeah, it was good fun. Oh, that's good to hear because I know you spend a lot of time on the continent, but to come back here and see it in front of your own crowd, always great to see. Yeah, it was, it was a good day. Um, not so much dust and uh, it was a good day's racing and yeah, it's a good enjoyable one. Excellent. That's our third place finisher, Andrew Appleton. Well, I think we can probably call this one a local man that finished in second, started the day in tremendous form. We, every time he went past us in the caravan, he was on the back wheel only. You know who I'm talking about. Finished in second, Paul Hurley. Well, I'm going to have a quick word, Paul, because uh, obviously we've got the first place coming up. But, I mean, I've just mentioned then that every time you come past us, you seem to be on the back wheel only. Was that an indication that you were enjoying yourself? No, the bottle's taking me where we wanted to go. <laughs> <laughs> but you've ridden this track many times. It's as quick as it ever has been. Yeah, um, Dad, I've got a different roller in um, this week, so we've been using that quite a bit, and it packed it in quite well. Um, you always sort of get a vision of what you want, but getting it is, is a bit, bit of a different story. But yeah, we got there in the end, and I think most people enjoyed it. Well, I would have said everybody enjoyed it, and indeed, a, a tough race call. There was a lot of tough competitors out there. Couldn't quite do it in the end. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's different. Um, I prefer watching him than racing him, so it's, it's always going to be a, a sort of difficult one. But yeah, fair play to Zach. Once he gets out to start, you've got to go some to catch him, and you know he's, he's going to, he will get there in the end and he's going to be one of our best hopes I think. Yeah I absolutely agree with that so let's call up the winner of the 2019 Champion of Champions it is of course over here in Zach Vicknack Well, that's the one that's worth having, Zach. But before you go up there, I'm never going to reach you up there, am I? But, uh, well, what can I say? You've just heard it from Paul. You're a tough man to beat. And you were absolutely flying in that final. Yeah, no, it, it, we, we've had a few problems today, but we managed to get it sorted for the final. And, uh, yeah, I was a bit worried because he was looking real fast today as well. So, um, no, nah, it, 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 like I said, the track was awesome today. And no, no grippy bits. It, consistent and to get a grass track consistent is really hard to do but they've done a good job and yeah give it got to give it to them uh, it, they always put on a good good track here and uh, yeah I enjoyed it well I think the crowd enjoyed it as well our winner of the champion of champions of 2019 Zach Wignac <laughs> so let's give it just one more round of applause for our top three this afternoon in the 2019 champion of champions the name that goes in the history books are Andrew Appleton Paul Harry Zach Picknick. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, now, well, I've got a couple of extra trophies. You might be wondering what all these gentlemen are doing up here. Before I move on to the sidecars, there's a few people in this area who remember this man, George. But, George, I understand you've got a couple of trophies to be given out. And the first person I'd like to call up is, uh, I know he's been talking to Dave earlier on this afternoon, I know he's here, Mr. Reg Luckhurst. Is he here? Hopefully he's here. Reg? Somebody should have pre-warned him. Oh, he's, he should be here. Everybody's telling me he should be here. Where are you hiding, Reg? <laughs> well, all right, we'll, we'll hang on to that one for a moment then. <laughs> right, the other trophy that George wants to present is... Oh, in fact, he's... Oh, oh hang on. 
Right. While I'm, while I'm doing that then, is, um, we'll do Graham's, because I know he's desperate to get down and help him with the clearing up. It's um, Astro Motorcycle Club, the George Marsh Award, presented to Graham Hurry, number 86, for many years. Service and support to the grass track racing. Well, I think we've all got to agree with that, that from what you've heard from the riders, that uh, we've had a tremendous race circuit out there. So I'll leave that with you, George. Present to Mr. Graham Hurry. Well, thank you, Rugby. And I, I see that we've now got Reg here as well. Reg, if you could join us. Well, while Reg, Reg is getting himself up here, I'm getting a bit nervous about handing him the microphone, but um, I'll take my chances. The George Marsh Award presented to Mr. Reg Luckhurst for many years, service and support to the grass track and speedway world. Excellent. Sums it all up. That's for you, Reg. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if you can break in from this conversation, but George has obviously watched you for many years, Reg. And I'll get you to say a few words, because it'll be back home to Tenerife, I take it now. Not a month, yes, we're out in Tenerife. This cup trophy is bigger than I've ever won in ever racing. <laughs> that is bigger than the first Grand Slam Cup. That was just the um, Femmes Cup, the Femmes of the uh, Big Brewery. I still got it. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Back in the 70s and the 80s, we used to get little bits of wood, didn't we? You know, and we were happy with that, and little medals and things, but hey-ho, you've now got a big trophy. Oh, yes. We had wood, but then it went on to plastic. <laughs> we got lost in plastic. Absolutely. Well, indeed, a great adversary for the sport, and uh, fantastic to see him going away with a bit of silverware this afternoon. A very young Mr. Reg Luckhurst. Right, well, I've just been told that George is going to help me do the presentation for the sidecars. So, the 2019 sidecars, we start with third place. And calling up onto the rostrum, when they went across the finishing line, I think they were very pleased to get this result. It is, of course, Neil Owen and Jason Farrell. <laughs> Yeah, got to have a word, Neil, because obviously you run slightly different machinery to everybody else out there, but a good day. What do you mean slightly? It's exactly the same. <laughs> it's got three wheels and an engine. Yeah, but the engine is very different. Yes, uh, it was nice to get uh, the garden out there. Uh, we fought through the B final, got into the A final, spoke to Jason, just throw everything at it, and third place is fantastic. Yeah, very, very pleased for you. Jason, enjoyed the day's racing? Absolutely loved it. The track rode really well. We was lucky to get into the A final because uh, somebody thought we only had a three lap B final until I shouted at him to keep going. So <laughs> fair play, he kept it pinned and we, he got us into the A final and over the moon with this. Absolutely excellent. Well, there you go. You've heard one of the trade secrets now that Neil is not very good at counting the number of laps he's doing. But fortunately, he's got a passenger that does. <laughs> Well, that's our third place finishes, our second place finishes, and indeed, they went into the final one, beaten this afternoon. It looked like it was going to be a two-way scrap, it turned out to be that, but finishing in second for the 2019 Champion of Champions is Tom Cosser and Carl Pugh. Tom, before you disappear up there, I'm going to have a quick word, because I'm sure everybody in the crowd is thinking the same as I do sometimes. That's uh, taking family rivalry a bit 
too far, really, isn't it? When you're just competing like that, you're both unbeaten coming into the final. Yeah, well, you know, he sets up my bike as well, so it's a bit more than just family rivalry, but, you know, he helps me out, and we are where we are. At the end of the day, we're brothers, we're racers on the track, as soon as we leave the track, brothers. That's good to hear, and indeed, you're both very, very competitive, and a great performance, but you must have enjoyed the racing out there today. Yeah, it was superb, obviously, we had a mishap with uh, Gary Shearer in the, uh, in the first final, but that was no fault of anyone's, we just had to come in together then. Ironically enough, I had to come in together with Mark in the rerun of the final at the bottom end of the shape, but, you know, luckily enough, he passed me anyway, so, yeah, it was a good day, it was a good day. Very good day indeed. Take up your position on that second place. You're not escaping from me, Carl, because I'm going to get a word. You've been doing this sport for a very long time, but still enjoying it. Too long, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's always a good day, isn't it? Track road well today. One of the best it's ever rode, actually. Really good. And he's one hell of a driver, isn't he? Yeah, I ain't, I'm going to keep my chicken suit yet, so... <laughs> yeah, really good, really good. Well done indeed. Our second place finishes Tom Crosser and Carl Pugh. It means that we've just got one more place to fill and he's up on the roster and once again it is of course Mark Crosser and Liam Brown. <laughs> So you're not going to disappear that quickly, Mark, because I'm not climbing all the way up there. I mean, in terms of racing, you were quick. But what I'm going to go back to is earlier on in the day, because Liam has stepped in and helped you out. So what happened with Carl? He got 20 miles from home and the car gave up. So uh, couldn't get it going. Again, his van broke down two days prior, so he had no transport. So. And home is Plymouth, isn't it, nowadays, for Carl? Yep, so everybody that's travelling from that area was already here. So it was, yeah, no chance. So you wrote this man in, busiest man of the day. <laughs> yeah, Liam loves it though. But yeah, luckily, fair play to Liam for jumping on, I would have been here without him. Excellent, and indeed, you must have enjoyed that. You look like you're really enjoying it coming off this pit bend particularly. You look bloody quick. For me, it's the best this track's ever rode. Whatever they've done different, the starts were more predictable, the corners didn't rut up so much, so you could stay on the throttle longer. So it was, yeah, it was, it was the best track they've ever held here, I think. Oh, fantastic. And I've got to have a word with Liam because, I mean, I jokingly say you were the busiest man of the day, but you've done a bit of driving. I've seen you passengering the 500s, I've seen you passengering the 1000s, and now you just step in and do both on the same day. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not too bad as long as... Uh guy that sorts the program out uh, helps me out a bit um, other than that it's um, it's just a matter of switching over really and all enjoyable yeah yeah I enjoy my racing that's that's why I do it and I think as soon as the point comes where I'm not enjoying it that's I think that's time to give up then Absolutely right. Well, well done for this afternoon. Our 2019 champion of champions in the sidecars, Neil Owen and Jason Farnwell, Tom Crosser and Carl Pugh, Mark Crosser and Liam Brown. And I haven't forgotten George. George has got yet another trophy. I think he's gone in the business of producing these trophies. But that is George's trophy to the top sidecar. <laughs> So that concludes our racing for this afternoon. Well done indeed to the sidecar crews. I hope you've enjoyed the racing this afternoon. You've heard from the riders themselves. The track rode fantastically. We hope the Astra Club are going to continue to race here at Swingfield. That's up to you guys to let them know that you still want them to keep going and give them all the support they need. But well done. Have a very safe journey home. We'll see you at grass track very, very soon.